Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon. Good evening to all of you. How are you? So today is Taurus Day. Uh, it's the day 320, 320. So a lot has happened and we just have 40 days ahead to finish this. So a quarantine, strictly a quarantine ahead for this to end. <laughs> so I guess that we all will have to to start to do some kind of uh, detachment <laughs> from all of this. Of course that I'm not gonna leave like this and just disappear. I, uh, we have, um, we have uh, uh, the Dragon's Path ahead. So of course I'm gonna be contacting, um, connecting every 10 days, every Taurus day. Um, so I won't disappear. And of course, I will be writing uh, some of the things that might happen. Um, so I will be around. Don't worry. So to wrap the emotional week, today we have the topic of communication. I hope you were able to read the post for today. I guess that if you were able to read the post today, it's very clear where it goes to. So let's see this concept of, um, of communication from the inside point of view, which is the, um, the inner communication, the interaction and the other one, um, the one from the from outside, which is uh, the media, of course, related to the bigger communication in the world, the outside, and so on. So, first of all, let's remember what is communication. The word communication comes from the word com, that means together. Uh, many together, um, munere, muner, munus, that means to take something, to bring something. Um, then ikare, that means to transform something. And, uh, and shion, that means act. So communication is the act the action of transforming something that was brought with many into together. So we can understand that communication is not only about speaking, it's about connection and transforming something through that connection. So for example, I say something, I say I share an idea and I give it to someone by, by talking and that someone take that idea and create an answer for it, create something new from it and give it to me back. And I receive it, so I give it back to the other person. And I keep transforming the concept into something transcendental. This is the way in which we can see, we can understand um, what communication is. Okay, it's the act of, tra of transforming something that is brought from one side to another. Mm -hmm. So eventually this word communication turned out to be something that is related to speaking, to sharing stuff, okay? When it's not necessary to be the word, it's not necessary to be just speaking. Mm -hmm. It could be anything. So one of the, of the, of the things that that take us this communication to our societies 
is many conflicts because through communication, through misunderstandings, we have been driven to wars and conflicts and and divisions of families and groups and and many many kind of problems that were just because of misunderstandings because we had a lack of processing in the information like when people take the words as they come and they don't do a process to uh, the code and to understand the words that you're receiving and that's when we have misunderstandings and conflicts so for sure you have heard the 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 story of uh, babel um the the story of babylonia the uh, the civilization that they said that the tower of babel um fell down because uh they got into war because everyone was in a conflict because nobody was speaking the same language and they were having these mistakes um in understanding and these uh conflicts in trying to communicate to each other so they couldn't trust each other that's why um they started to to the start of the war so this story of Babel is something that we can take as an example of how complicated could be could come could could become the relationship with others if when we are trying to say something we are not understood or we don't become flexible in trying to understand the other one when the other one is speaking not changing their own your own point of view so now the question would be why we arrive to these conflicts of communication and if we try to see the origin of all of them we will see that the word behind them is a secret why a secret because the secret is trying to defend something from others um is trying to protect an information from others um, because they kind of think that the other people can do something wrong with that information so that's why they start to create their own di dialectic their own language their own codes so the others don't get it don't understand hmm? um, to protect the knowledge. So I see, I see here that uh, some people, when I was saying about secrets, that was the key of, of uh, keeping the, the information. You might say names like Illuminati, the, the Freemasons and uh, all these kind of things, but I'm not speaking about them. I'm speaking about something really, really old very much older than that hmm? uh, that would be just for example a person that in the middle of the desert they find a hole with water so the people would say um uh, the, the the person should say to the others i found water but remember that this was a time where people could kill for water and um food so they started to find different ways to call something hmm, to call um this place of water so just a few the family the group the clan could know it so they started to use different words so others couldn't understand them so that's one of the reasons why many of the languages appears because they start to relate to each other so they could protect the information from others so for example that's how um, um, um that's how uh, a hole of water might be called a well okay so you don't say water 
and everyone is could say is a well okay um you don't have to say a hole of water hmm? so this brings all the languages and this brings this hermetic um conception of languages so um, um so eventually uh individuals families clans groups of people they started to use these kind of languages so they could protect their own secrets their own things um so we can we can see in our common day that you yourself maybe you use some kind of words to to speak with your family to know what you are um talking with your family also you can um you can see in your country hmm? the, the the country um has a for sure different words even if you are speaking the same language maybe you have in your region some different words that nobody in the same language can understand so these kind of things are the ones that um that takes us to um that takes us to uh to see how us how we humanity created something to protect the information so it was a way to communicate to each other in a group in a close group so others don't get what we are saying hmm? through thousands of years um through thousands of years we have been hiding these truths um these secrets uh not only as humans but it's something really natural it comes from thousands and millions of years ago and nature basically is about secrets nature tries to keep secrets because um the, our truth is our weakness that's how nature sees things so you have to protect that into a lot of things so nobody could see your weakness so you can survive for example very easy an owl an owl has the shape of a tree of a, of a trunk so you see the color you see the shape of the feathers they look like if they are a part of the tree the secret of the owl is that the owl is really tiny and all the feathers look very big but also they are they look like the tree so if an owl would show how tiny it is and would show uh how weak it is and put a lot of colors an owl would never eat any mice so nothing Mm -hmm. uh, so they would die so they need to hide their weakness they need to hide um, their their soft part in order to seem really big and powerful this is something really useful in nature that helps us survive through thousands of years even us we are here be because of this because we were good on hiding stuff that's the main reason but eventually when we become humans and we start to leave behind the idea of hum of animals uh we can transcend and to start to take the truth out to be able to show our weakness so this reason of thousands of years that we have been um understanding that um our weakness can kill us so we created a whole culture on trying to protect that weakness so we try to show ourselves like nobody can do anything to me if i show the opposite if i show that i am strong even if inside i'm weak because whoever was weak could be killed so that's why we we were hiding our truth and this becomes something cultural so 
we started to to hide our truth with a lot of lies so we could seem stronger and that created a culture a language of hiding things so we can protect the truth with a lot of lies you understand i guess it's very important for us to understand this now because from the biological and historical point of view we can now understand why the systems the politics the religion lie to us why they hide stuff from us but much more important is that this helps us also to understand why we hide stuff from our friends partners family our child children hmm? systems lie to us because they are afraid of losing power we lie to the people we love because we are afraid of losing their love it never happened to you really so i i think that this is very clear that the reason why we hide stuff the society hides stuff in all the levels is because usually are afraid of losing something of losing life food whatever losing something it's very animal it's not even human it's very from millions of years ago very old fears that covers the weakness with a lot of lies in order to protect themselves and survive there is no one in the world that is lying to us because it's powerful or because wants to control and has a plan for control humanity no the reason why people in the systems are lying is because they are afraid of losing the power because they are so weak that they don't have anything else but this kind of control to survive And it's important to know also that I just said society, the systems of society, which includes us, is not only something from the ones that are in the higher levels of society. It's us too. We do that all the time. every day sometimes for example when some when you walk through in the streets and someone says hey how are you and you say fine and maybe you are not fine and you just say it as a defense mechanism like you don't even think about it it's like fine why because your brain says if i say that i'm wrong maybe the predators will kill me because they know that i am weak right now <laughs> why not to say yes i'm sad today i'm not very i'm not very well when you say that it's not an invitation for the other one to become your therapist it's just being sincere and that's it I would make a question that sometimes brings some conflicts here like uh, why do we lie to our kids every Christmas
why why do we lie them to them because we want for them to believe in magic or what i don't understand so for example um i would i would say this thought to you like if it's about illusion and magic, isn't, isn't it magical and gives a lot of illusion to think that the celebration, that the celebration is the solstice, that the celebration is that the earth is spinning and a whole turn around the sun is ending. And it's so amazing that we are moving in an invisible line and suddenly at midnight that day in the solstice, it changed everything. And we have to celebrate that we are living another cycle more. And that that's why we give some gifts and we celebrate nature and life. Kids can imagine from that. Kids can create stories from that. But to lie, to lie and keep a lie for years, to hide a truth to kids. Why? Culture. So sometimes we say it's a sweet lie. It's something that it's just for kids to have illusion. But I would just say this. The first seven years of our life determine the 70 years next. So whatever happens in that seven years will determine our way of thinking because the neurons absorb all the information around and design the structure of memory that we will use throughout our life in the first seven years. So if in those seven years, we have been live, living through a lie, through different kind of lies. So what can we trust after that? Are we teaching the kids to lie because sometimes it's good? So I'm not saying this because I am blaming anyone or someone because you've been lying to kids. No, I, I'm saying this in this way for you to understand how big these tiny lies can become. Hmm? We cannot do anything with this now because with the past, because of course it was culture. We are not guilty from that. We just came from that culture and none of us invented that. It just came with us. It, it, it was natural. So you, you don't have to blame yourself for what, what happened. The only thing that we can do now is to become aware that if we become conscious about all these things, we should not keep doing this just because it's culture. Because we are generating new, new cultures, new, new generations of liars or people that is easy to lie to. Hmm? So, one of the things that if I become a dad eventually that I would try to do is to awake this illusion uh, to, to show the magic, but not lying. I would show the illusion of knowing how the world works, the sun, the spinning uh, of the earth, the, the magic of, of reality. There are so, so many things that are incredible in this world that can awake the illusion of children um 
that are amazing. And of course, one of the things that I will try not to do it is to tell to my child all my beliefs because my beliefs are from my past and there are things that had shaped me uh, as I am, but uh, it could be a burden for the other one. So I would only answer my child, my, my child if it questioned to me, but not if I want for him to know. And this takes us to remember the conflict of communication. We close our world, hiding the data, the information that makes us feel weak or ashamed. Because what would happen if others could know what I have inside? So they close and we don't share, we don't say our inner truth. We keep it for ourselves. So this keeping the things, the secrets, is what brought us to a time in which we have a very huge lack of communication, a lot of problems in communication, because basically we are afraid of sharing what we have within. And sometimes it has been through so many generations that we don't even know where to find them, where to find this truth. So this lack of communication can take us to many problems. Um, and of course, there are some informations that we can take for ourselves because maybe it doesn't make the difference. It's something from my own um, and that's it. There's no problem, but some others, they get stuck and they become an illness. And there's a need of saying them to take them out, to be released. Otherwise it only creates problems outside. So this is like Babel Tower. So many people keeping secrets, protecting their truth that nobody could understand and trust each other. So at the very tiniest misunderstanding, a whole civilization went down. War. So this conflict of Babel is still here in our current days, in our cultures, in our countries creating many of the conflicts that we have today and uh, even in, the, in our own families, our own groups. Like how many of you for sure, when you, when you started to make some therapy or something like that, you discover so many secrets in your family. Um, so many secrets that um, that were hidden and they said this is unspoken. This is why today we have to make so much healing and we have to go to therapies like the, to the tree of the family tree to 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 heal uh, disease from through generations because some of the conflicts that we have today in our life are all related to things that were unspoken in our family that we would be able to solve very easy if we would know that before but nobody wanted to tell to speak about that 
So this is why one of the challenges that we have towards the future is to be able to share, to tell what we have within our secrets, our pains, our shames, our sadness, our secrets, our conflicts, everything that we have within. We have to learn how to share it so we can set the others, the new generations free from that weight. That's what communication means. It's about taking something from me to others to be transformed. So this is why today, in the day of Taurus, we set the intention to improve our communication and to allow everything that we have within to be transformed. The vibration for today is The statement today is I am eternal energy.